What life-threatening condition do you see on this teenager's CAT scan? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 17-year-old female who was at a baseball game. She got struck right above her right temple by a foul ball. She lost consciousness for a few minutes and then was taken to the hospital where a CT scan showed this. I'm gonna scroll through the images on the CT scan and then explain it. When we look at CT scans, actually what we're doing is we're taking two-dimensional cuts of the patient's brain and then in our minds, we can formulate it into what a three-dimensional picture would look like. So going through this CT scan of the brain, as we slide down, you can see the patient's eyes and nose, and right here is above the right ear. In the temporal lobe, we see this white stuff here, which is actually acute blood. On the bone windows, you can see an ever so slight skull fracture right there. The bone that's right above our ear is called the temporal bone, and it is the thinnest part of our skull. Immediately under the skull in that location is a vessel called the middle meningeal artery. If you suffer a skull fracture right above the ear, that skull can tear this artery and cause an arterial bleed. And arteries can bleed fast. So this patient had what we call a lucid interval. Well, basically she went unconscious and then regained consciousness and then became lethargic and unresponsive again. Why did that happen? It's because the bleeding was growing rapidly and then it was causing pressure on her brain. She needs surgery and she needs it fast. Many of you guys said that this was a subdural hematoma and there are very significant differences between a subdural and an epidural hematoma. Let me explain. Epidurals are caused from laceration of an artery, typically through a skull fracture, as shown here. That means arteries bleed fast and cause what we call a convexity. Here you can see this lemon-shaped mass that is pushing the brain over. A subdural hematoma is typically from a venous bleed and is usually a slower presentation without the lucid interval. Remember that arteries pump and veins typically ooze, so you can see this large expanding hematoma here and the slow developing hematoma here. Subdural hematomas typically happen when the venous structures that lie between the dura and the brain tear and the bleeding is actually under the dura, which is why it's called subdural. Because it's slow growing, it typically forms a banana shaped B. And remember, sub dural B for banana. They can also be significantly life threatening, but are more common in older people and in alcoholics. Okay, this patient's actively dying, so now what? We take her to the OR, we remove her skull, find the vessel that's bleeding, stop the bleeding, remove the clot, and put her back together, and boom, she's fixed. Other than a new haircut, she was perfectly fine and went home two days later. It's a beautiful day to save lives. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.